Do you know how to catch a spider monkey? Legend says that it's pretty simple. A hunter that wants to trap a spider monkey creates a jar or sturdy basket with a wide bottom and a narrow neck. The hunter puts bait inside, usually a big juicy orange that just fits through the neck of the trap. Then they stake the trap to the ground so it can't be moved. Now when a spider monkey comes along and smells the bait, they stick their hand in the neck of the trap and they grab the orange. But they can't get their hand and the orange back out of the narrow neck. Reluctant to lose their prize, this big juicy orange, the monkey will stand there with their hand in the jar while the hunter walks up to them and catches them in a net. Now I can't vouch for this approach to catching a monkey, but I suspect that the image rings true for many of us. We're trapped, not because we're restrained, but because our hand is grasping for something that we covet and we can't let it go. It's something inside us that holds us down that keeps us from being free. Jesuit priest Larry Gillick ponders on this notion in reflecting on today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Consider this passage. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. Notice Jeremiah's emphasis on interiority. The spirit of God will inspire each of us to know the proper response. The new covenant will not be written on stone tablets, but within the hearts of people. God promises that this interior covenant will continue even when the external response isn't perfect. In other words, even when we are sinful, God remains. Even when our hands are trapped because we find we can't let go, God remains. Now the Gospel of John that we heard from today does not record Jesus's anguished prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest. But the second half of today's Gospel is a close parallel. Here we see Jesus exhibiting the same kind of interiority that we are all called to, to look inside, to agonize about our will versus the will of God. For you and I, the covenant is written on our hearts, and we need to take a journey to go deep within to see and experience the covenant in order to be willing to let go. But what do we need to let go of? Jesus finds the answer in his heart. He says, Father, glorify your name. He does not say, Father, glorify my name. And that's pretty fascinating when you think about where we are in the sequence of the gospel. He has just come from his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, which we celebrate next weekend. The great crowd went out to meet him. They sang songs in his name. They welcomed him like a hero. No, not a hero. More like a rock star. Even the Greeks in today's gospel treat Jesus like a star. They didn't want to approach him directly, but they went to some of his friends and said, hey, can you get us in? We want to see that guy that everyone is talking about. Help us out here. But Jesus knows who he is. He knows his mission. He knows his father. So he doesn't respond as a rock star looking for honor and glory and acclamation from the crowds. He does not glorify his own name. Instead, he tells them a short parable about a grain of wheat dying and producing much fruit. True glory lies not in rock star status, but on the contrary, 
in being willing to fall and die like a grain of wheat. It lies in being willing to let go. To let go of the things we covet that we think fulfill our needs. To loosen our grasp on getting more for ourselves. And instead, to die to ourselves in order to foster new growth, to serve God's people. Now, I don't know what bait might be in the monkey trap that is out there for you, but I suspect we've all seen those traps lying around us, places where something inside us holds us back, places where we need to go on an interior journey to see the words of the covenant that God has written on our hearts, places where we need to let go and remember God's words, I am yours and you are mine. I will remember your sin no more. Open your hand, pull your arm out of the trap and use it to embrace God. That's the way forward for all of us. God bless.